Rocky Johnson was a Canadian-born wrestler, debuting in 1964 and winning countless titles, and along with Tony Atlas, becoming the first WWF Black Tag Team title holders. For more than 20 years, Rocky Johnson was a top-tier professional wrestler sought after by promoters from all over the world. He's also known as being the father of Dwayne Johnson. Although he fathered at least eight children from at least half a dozen women, he had little to no relations with most of his other kids throughout their lives and even refused to have contact with some of them. He was considered among the top wrestlers from his era, but his behaviors outside the ring would foreshadow his life, including extramarital affairs, several accusations of sexual assault, and inappropriate actions towards females in and out of the wrestling business. His autobiography, Soul Man, The Rocky Johnson Story, was pulled from shells when payment disputes arose between Johnson and the co-writer Scott Teal, when Johnson refused to pay the full amount that was agreed upon during the writing of the book. On February 25, 2008, he was announced as an inductee along with his father-in-law, High Chief Peter Maivia, into the WWE Hall of Fame. Both Johnson and his father-in-law were inducted by his son, Dwayne Johnson. He passed away in 2020 when he became ill and refused to see a doctor. This is the story of Rocky Soul Man Johnson. Rocky Johnson was born Wade Douglas Bullis on August 24, 1944 in Amherst, Nova Scotia. He was 12 years old before he realized there was such a thing as professional wrestling. The wrestling season in Nova Scotia began in May and finished up in early October. It was known as a summer territory. Because of the heavy snowfalls during the winter, the wrestlers couldn't always get from town to town. In spring 1956, Rocky saw some men nailing posters on telephone poles and placing them in store windows. He'd never heard about pro wrestling before that, but in the days that followed, he heard the kids at school talking about it. He was intrigued and made up his mind to go see what it was all about. In his autobiography, he would state, Amherst was where I got my first peek at something behind the scenes that the average wrestling fan never saw. One night, the baby faces signed my notebook and then got into a nearby car. As I watched them pull away, I saw two sets of eyes peek up over the back seat. The eyes belonged to the two heels the other two had just finished wrestling. Just a short time before, they had been trying to kill the guys who had just gotten into the front seat. The four wrestlers were breaking one of the cardinal rules that most wrestling promoters enforce strictly. Baby faces and heels were never to travel together. The wrestlers often broke that rule though, especially in those days. They only made 10 or $15 a night, so they rode together to save money. I didn't know at that time, but I remember thinking it was strange to see the four of them in the same car. Rocky left home at the age of 14 to seek his fortune. Excelling in gymnastics in school as well as track and field, the foundation of his athletic career was laid. He made his way to Toronto and after a short stint in boxing, claiming to have sparred with greats such as Muhammad Ali and George Foreman, he decided to make professional wrestling his career. He ended up pursuing formal training from Jack Wentworth, who trained notables like Ivan Koloff. He had his first match in 1965 and never looked back. Wade Bolas disappeared from the face of the earth and a man named Rocky Johnson emerged. He chose the name Rocky Johnson as a tribute to two of his favorite boxing greats, Rocky Marciano and Jack Johnson. His first pro wrestling match was against Furpo Zabisco. As wrestling was not yet a viable option to fully support himself, he would work odd jobs in warehouses, construction, and drive truck. As a direct descendant of slaves, Rocky took pride not only in his career record, but for what he had done in regards to those of his race. As a black Nova Scotian, he is a descendant of black loyalists who immigrated to Nova Scotia after escaping from a plantation in the southern United States after the American Revolutionary War. Rocky got a tremendous rub from fellow Canadian Billy Watson the third ever NWA World Heavyweight Champion. Rocky was presented as Watson's protege, a move that he attributed to Watson's political ambitions and that being associated with a black Canadian wrestler would eventually help Watson win over black voters. As a result, Rocky got an impressive push that raised his profile as a performer in huge venues and other promotions. Through the late 1960s, he would wrestle all across Canada and down the California coast. 
On April 3, 1967, he won the NWA Vancouver Canadian Tag Team titles with Don Leo Jonathan defeating Chris and John Tolos. And in 1970, won the NWA Los Angeles America Tag Team titles with Earl Maynard defeating the Mask Medics. He was a top contender in the National Wrestling Alliance in the 1970s, receiving title matches against then world champion Terry Funk and Harley Race. He was well suited for tag team wrestling, winning several regional tag team championships in the NWA. Rocky wrestled on and off in the Memphis promotion, often feuding with Jerry Lawler and even winning Lawler's crown at one point. He also wrestled under a mask as Sweet Ebony Diamond in the Mid-Atlantic area. In the South, he broke down race barriers when he became the first African American to win the Southern Georgia and Florida heavyweight titles. Rocky recounted in his autobiography, Soul Man, that he met his first wife, Una Sparks, at a dance while he was training to become a boxer. Una was also from Nova Scotia and a devout Jehovah Witness. They had two children, Curtis and Wanda, whom he thanked at his 2008 WWE Hall of Fame induction. While married to Una, he became romantically involved with Atta Maivia, daughter of wrestling legend High Chief Peter Maivia. She met Rocky after Maivia and Johnson were tag team partners. Peter Maivia disapproved of their relationship because Johnson was already married and a wrestler. Their son Dwayne was born May 2, 1972. With 1976 came a much publicized wrestler vs boxer match between Muhammad Ali and New Japan Pro Wrestler founder Antonio Inoki and Memphis-based wrestler Jerry the King Lawler tapped Rocky Johnson to be the credible boxing talent to take on the King. The angle made use of photos of Johnson sparring with famous boxers and the two stars clashed a few times throughout 1976 and 1977. At one point, the NWA Southern Heavyweight Championship was on the line and Rocky managed to defeat Lawler for the belt. Rocky stated that, in order to provide for his two families, he adopted a frugal lifestyle on the road. He survived on beer, sliced cheese and bologna, and was not a partier. He did not reveal if Una knew about Atta and Dwayne, but stated that she gave him an ultimatum to quit pro wrestling or they would have to separate as Jehovah Witnesses. Didn't believe in blood sport. He stated that he and Una parted amicably and remained good friends. He obtained a divorce in Texas, then filed for a marriage license in Florida on December 21, 1978 to Marietta. By marrying her, he became a member of the famous Samoan wrestling family. In 1982, Rocky feuded with Don Morocco, Greg Valentine, Mike Sharp, Buddy Rose and Adrian Adonis. He was then paired with Tony Atlas as a tag team. They defeated the Wild Samoans for the Tag Team Championship on the December 10, 1983 episode of Championship Wrestling. They were the first African Americans to hold the WWF Tag Team titles. Together they were billed as the Soul Patrol. They would hold the belts for 154 days, defending them against teams like Paul Orndorff and Roddy Piper, Mr. Fuji and Tiger Chung Lee, and the Wild Samoans in several matches. On April 17, 1984, Adrian Adonis and Dick Murdoch defeated Rocky Johnson and Tony Atlas for the WWF Tag Team titles. As Soul Patrol, Rocky Johnson and Tony Atlas were a compatible team in the ring, as Johnson was more athletic and Atlas was a powerhouse wrestler. However, their relationship outside the ring wasn't exactly smooth, often fraught with drama. Behind the scenes, Tony Atlas reportedly had a drug problem that interfered with his work, and such unreliability caused tension with his tag team partner. There are even rumors that the two came to blows backstage. After leaving WWF in June 1985, in 1986 he legally changed his name to Rocky Johnson. In September of 1987, Johnson was arrested and charged with aggravated rape of a 19-year-old Tennessee woman. According to the woman, she was assaulted inside the vehicle by Johnson, he was arrested and his bail was set at $10,000. The woman claimed that she met Johnson at a local wrestling match and spoke to him about becoming a wrestler and Rocky told her he would help her train her and learn how to take falls. Later, he offered to give her a ride home as a birthday present. During the trip home, they made various stops, drank vodka and talked wrestling. 
She testified Rocky never forced her to drink the vodka or tried to touch her until after she passed out. The next thing she knew, she woke up at the hospital with several cuts and scratches. But Rocky told a different story. According to his statement, the woman's family wanted him to attend her birthday party and at some point the woman asked Rocky to go with her to get something to drink, he told authorities. Shortly afterwards, he stated the woman began to fondle him and perform oral on him despite his protest he was married. The next year, a jury refused to indict Rocky on the charges because the woman initially stated that she was intoxicated and couldn't clearly remember what happened. Rocky claimed he was set up by rival wrestlers, although some were led to believe that he was blacklisted from wrestling by wrestling in Saudi Arabia and violating his contract with the WWF. It was this incident that had him blacklisted from wrestling, leading him to alcoholism and a strained relationship with the rest of his family. According to Luann Grable, who was the mistress of Rocky Johnson for over 25 years, Rocky was a serial cheater. She said, Rocky was a serial cheater. It wasn't until later I realized he had a woman in virtually every arena that he wrestled. In the latter part of the 1980s, he would spend time wrestling mostly in Hawaii and the World Wrestling Council in Puerto Rico. He would retire from wrestling in 1991. But according to Vance Nevada's records, he wrestled a handful of shows in Florida in 1993 and wrestled Dan Spivey in 1994 winning the CCW heavyweight title. In 2000, Florida Mayor Harry Venus took a personal interest in Rocky Johnson and hired him as his personal trainer. Later he would be also instrumental in getting Rocky hired at the Pine Island Community Center in Davie, Florida as a part-time activities leader earning just $9.11 per hour. Johnson was investigated for several cases of misconduct, including theft and unwanted groping of female co-workers. He later faced charges of battery and theft after he allegedly took home a piece of athletic equipment as well as inappropriately grabbing a female co-worker and also rumors spread that he had asked a 12-year-old girl to play strip poker with him. According to the Broward State Attorney's Office, while noting there was sufficient evidence that Johnson had groped his co-worker, declined to prosecute because the woman feared the publicity it would bring her. The issue was called Rocky Gate by people in the town. Rocky received numerous perks during his less than four months as an employee, including use of a town-issued cellular phone, use of a town car, and advance warning of disciplinary action before he was suspended. Reports also indicated Rocky kept the cell phone he was supposed to turn in, racking up an almost $1,000 bill. The police stated that the allegations were not criminal, but administrative, meaning Rocky only violated personal rules. While Rocky Johnson would only hold one championship in the WWE, he was actually a highly decorated champion across the various territories affiliated with the National Wrestling Alliance. In addition to singles titles, Johnson and WWE legend Pat Patterson scored four NWA tag title reigns in the California wrestling scene. Before showing up in the WWF, he wrestled in Mid-Atlantic Championship Wrestling, enjoying two reigns with the NWA World Television title while feuding with Greg the Hammer Valentine. After retiring, Rocky along with Pat Patterson trained his son Dwayne to wrestle. While he initially resisted his son's entry into what he knew to be an extremely difficult business, Johnson agreed to train him on the condition that he would not go easy on him. Rocky was instrumental in getting Dwayne, later dubbed Rocky Maivia, signed to a WWF developmental deal. Initially, Rocky had an on-camera presence at his son's matches and jumped into the ring on his behalf after he was attacked by the Sultan and the Iron Sheik at WrestleMania 13. He was not seen on camera again after the Rocky Maivia character flopped and soon Dwayne achieved crossover popularity as a cocky heel The Rock. Atta and Rocky divorced in 2003. During his wrestling years, he was known for his extramarital affairs. In early 2003, Rocky was hired as a trainer for the WWE developmental territory Ohio Valley Wrestling, but was let go in May due to unknown reasons. 
He made a return to the ring and defeated Mabel in a boxing match at Memphis Wrestling on November 29, 2003. On February 25, 2008, Rocky was announced as an inductee into the WWE Hall of Fame along with his father-in-law, High Chief Peter Maivia. Both Johnson and his father-in-law were inducted into the Hall of Fame by his son The Rock. For all the entertainment in the ring that he provided to fans throughout his lengthy career, the late Rocky Johnson's final public action, writing his autobiography, had been a disaster. The book had to be pulled from shelves and its author had proved background into Johnson's refusal to pay the full amount owing. Soul Man, the Rocky Johnson story, was officially released on October 15th by ECW Press, a publisher based in Toronto, Ontario. It was quietly removed from the ECW Press website and is no longer available to distributors or bookstores. A number of factors were taken into account. First and foremost, how Rocky Johnson dealt with his co-author Scott Teal. Teal is the man behind Crowbar Press, which has published dozens and dozens of autobiographies and record books, preserving pro wrestling history. He was also the publisher of the long-time running Whatever Happened To newsletter. Johnson sought out Teal after going down the road with a couple of other authors, including New York's Seth Turner, who is currently a key player in the launch of the International Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame and SLAM, as well as wrestling producer Greg Oliver. Teal and Johnson had a deal to write the autobiography, but not anything in writing as a contract. In their initial discussions, Teal and Johnson agreed that all advance money and royalties would be split 50-50. ECW Press was not involved with their deal, and the publisher had a contract solely with Johnson. This is not uncommon in the writing business, particularly because Johnson was still a Canadian citizen and a Canadian publisher can take advantage of grants and tax breaks if it chooses. Teal is an American living in Tennessee. Over four months, Teal did a total of 46 interviews with Johnson, much research into his life and times, and wrote up the manuscript. It was Teal that worked with the editors and layout staff at ECW Press to finish the book, and he was also tasked to collect some of the photos that appeared in the book, two of which were personally taken by him. The foreword of the book is listed as being written by Dwayne Johnson. Teal said in a Facebook post that he never talked to The Rock once, and that he has audio interviews with Rocky Johnson that give the blessing to write his son's words. During the writing process, Rocky only sent one check to Teal for $2,789.50. Shortly before the book hit shelves, Teal received a letter from John B. Cother, attorney at law in Orange City, Florida. The letter dated August 30th, 2019, acknowledges that Teal was hired and paid with the writing of the Rocky Johnson story, but be advised that your obligations to the said autobiography has ceased and all other entitlements to any past, current, or future payments with regards to said autobiography. By their verbal agreement, Johnson owed Teal half of his royalty money paid by ECW Press, which would have been paid in three parts, the third and final coming shortly after publication. ECW Press was informed about the lawyer's letter and any attempts to get Johnson to finish his payment to the writer failed. According to a source at ECW Press, there were other issues with Rocky Johnson aside from the failure to pay Teal. That resulted in the decision to pull the soul man Rocky Johnson story. Teal has kept relatively silent on the issue, but the death of Rocky Johnson on January the 15th and the subsequent references to his recently published autobiography have prompted Teal to clear the air. Greg Oliver had an ECW press contract with Rocky Johnson to write his autobiography before the work with Teal began, but Johnson ended communication over the book deal and never signed his copy of the contract. Oliver and Johnson never talked again. Oliver did, however, provide research material to Scott Teal for the project for a small fee, out of respect for all Teal's work through the years. Teal and Oliver have worked on numerous other projects together. On December 20th, 2019, Rocky Johnson joined the Board of Directors of the International Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame. On January 15th, 2020, at the age of 75, Rocky died of a pulmonary embolism at the home his son bought for him in Florida. The embolism was caused by a blood clot that traveled from his leg. B. Brian Blair told the Associated Press that Rocky thought he had the flu or something, but refused to go see a doctor. Hulk Hogan tweeted condolences describing Rocky as a great man, a great friend, and one of only a few that was kind and helpful when he first broke in. Johnson was married to Sheila Northern at the time of his death. 
In 2022, Sports Illustrated published an article stating that Rocky had five other children in separate relationships via DNA testing in the 2010s, which connected them to Rocky's brother Ricky. All five were refused in-person contact by Rocky in his lifetime and have not been contacted by Rocky's three other known children, but have reunited personally with Ricky Johnson and each other. That was the Rocky past of Rocky Johnson. You always said you for a better thing. Wanna replace me? I'm in a place that I've never been. It's worse than lonely. Can someone tell me there's a good in me? There's good in me. Cause I got doubts, I got doubts.